All right, we're in the third part of our scripture. We're not doing bad on our time. So just let's enjoy this last little bit. Once again, let me say, I'm preaching at ease and forget God. Deuteronomy 8 and 12. Lest when thou hast eaten and are full, and hast built goodly houses, and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought forth thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You know, Israel was shown to always recognize where they come from and how and what effort it took to get there, lest they forget God. One of the most tragic things that can ever happen in your life is to forget God. Nations that forget God will be turned into hell. And all those who forget God will be turned into hell. This is not just a personal issue. It's a national issue. And it's a worldwide issue. Not part of the world are just going to be affected. But the whole world. And one day an Antichrist will rise up. And he'll make you take the mark of the beast. Unless you say, I'm not doing it. He'll make you take it. Because he'll make you so hungry. You'll do anything to get past the hunger. Or he'll torture your babies. Or your family. Anything you love, he's going to try to defeat you. And it's going to take the power of God to resist him. But those that surrender to him and take that mark are eternally doomed. But those that can endure the persecution, it says about the church of Smyrna, said you endure ten days and be faithful unto death and I'll give you the crown of life. I preached about that two weeks ago. So let's don't be at ease and forget God. Let's love God with all our heart. This fifth tile, things which become sound doctrine. Now we're getting to hear what we can do about this. Titus 2 and 1. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity and patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, and to love their children. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands that the word of God be not blasphemed. The young man likewise exhort to be sober-minded, in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that, that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you, Exhort to servants, be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. Don't that just sound wholesome and good? Sound doctrine? Doing the things for God. Many people are wanting to do the things of the nature of man, which is evil. All their eyes on evil things. They love the world instead of loving God. They love the evil. They don't love the good. They call good evil and evil good. We see that in our world today. But why don't we take hold of good sound doctrine and teach our children and grandchildren to keep the Word of God 
and to love him and make a difference in this world. That's an uphill battle in these days, isn't it? That's a hard fight. But you know, we in this nursing home, we're blessed with the fact that we're not out there amongst a lot of the world. We're sheltered here. And I thank God for it because I don't want to have to fight that fight. Even with my own children and grandchildren. They do the things they want to do. Now some of them go to church. And all my kids are good kids. They work hard. They do the natural things of life. But I'd really love it if they would adorn the doctrine of God and get a hold of this message and let God do something in their heart that they would hear His will in their ear and understand what they have to do to make it to heaven. Let's go on to the last page of this sermon. The Everlasting Gospel. Revelation 14, 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him that made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying, with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his angel, image, and who receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat, like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a great golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. In this lesson, this part of the lesson, this is talking about the seventh trumpet. When you receive the mark of the beast, you're condemned. But at the seventh trumpet, this man on the cloud, the son of man, having on his head a golden crown, which is a crown of authority. In Revelation 10, the first chapter, you see a man clothed with a cloud, and on his hand, head, the crown of a rainbow. If you look back in Revelation 4 and 1, you'll see a rainbow around the throne of God. This mighty angel in the 10th chapter is none other but Jesus Christ, and he has the authority of the throne. No other man takes his glory. He will not let another take his glory at all. And this is the glorious Jesus Christ coming to redeem his bride from all the wickedness of the world. In the 11th chapter of Revelation, down toward the end of the chapter, you're going to see the seventh trumpet again. And he said, after the sixth trumpet, 
the seven trauma cometh quickly. And then you're going to read that he gives reward to the saints and the prophets and the apostles, to all them that have their name written in the Lamb book of life. They're delivered from the mark of the beast. They're waiting on the Lord to come. And when he comes is after Babylon falls. Now, who is Babylon? Well, Babylon is known as the hammer of the earth in the book of Jeremiah. And it is known of the U.S. and its military that we are called the hammer of the earth. Isn't that amazing? So you see, we could very well be Babylon, and that great city could very well be New York because it was a great harbor. It couldn't be the city of Babylon in the land of Iran because there's no harbors around that city of Babylon, but this is mystery Babylon. And all nations are partaking of the wine of her fornication. They indulge in all her practices. They were so wicked all together with her. Look what happened on 9-11. Look what got hit. The towers. The world market. World Trade Center. And it stuck a knife into the lifeblood of the world. And it's been draining it ever since. And Tom Daschle got up in front of the Congress and talked about when you take down our, our sycamores, we'll plant cedars. Just like the scripture talked about in the book of Jeremiah. And instead of hearing the word of God and really repenting of their wickedness, they wanted their wickedness more and more and not the word of God. And unfortunately, our nation has not really repented and turn to God. They just overcame what happened to the World Trade Center and let life carry on. But life has an end if you don't love God. And people that don't love God will readily take the mark of the beast because they've been shown so many movies about aliens, about spaceships, and about all these things. But when that angel stands out there and says, Fear God, it's his glory coming down. Keep the word of God. He's telling that to the whole world. They're going to hear something and see something they've never seen before. And they'll turn to that beast for deliverance instead of turning to God. Many of our friends will do that. But I don't want to turn away from God, do you? I want to be in that part that it says, the patience of the saints, they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord and their works do follow them. And I want to be around when that white cloud appears and that son of man having that sharp sickle and he thrusts in to reap the harvest of the earth. Remember back in the last set of uh, preaching I did, talking about the sowers and the seed, and that last parable where a wicked one sowed tares. Remember that it said he got the tares out of the way. He got the tares from among the wheat. And now it's time for him to come and reap the harvest of the earth. And when you look beyond this scripture, in the next chapter, you're going to see what a blessing it is to be in heaven when the wrath of God is poured out. I've enjoyed preaching this morning. It's new to us, splitting it up like this and trying to record. But I thank God for the opportunity to preach here at the nursing home and to preach pe to people around the world. We never know how many people are watching what we do here. And you know I love it that we can carry on in this life and do wonderful things for God. God bless you. I'm going to play another song when I shut down the video.
try to do something about the beeping next time. I could have done that with the mouse and probably not had it so loud. Let me go shut the video down. We're not really late. It's only 10.16.